Hey friends, tonight we are hanging out at Disney's Animal Kingdom. I wanted to come out and make a little update video for the new year 2023. And then later on, we have dining reservations at Jico, which is one of the highest rated restaurants in Walt Disney World. And fun fact, I've never eaten there before. So I figured we'd come on out, ride some rides, eat some food, and have a beautiful Animal Kingdom kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. It is a beautiful day to be hanging out at Disney's Animal Kingdom. 81 degrees out, the skies are crystal clear blue. I don't think we're expecting any rain and I'm excited to have some fun. Like I mentioned earlier, we had dinner reservations at Jico over at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge and I have never eaten there before. All of my foodie friends tell me this is their favorite restaurant so I'm very excited to try it. And after I eat there tonight, I'm only two restaurants away from being able to say I've eaten at every single restaurant in Walt Disney World. I have Victoria and Albert's and Monsieur Paul and I'm going to be able to have that title. Looks like we're just in time for winged encounters and it's going to be really pretty to see all the macaws flying in the sky. Genie Plus is $15 today, but I really don't think I'm going to need to buy it. Animal Kingdom, I feel like, is one of the parks where I don't think it's worth it to buy Genie Plus. I mean, unless you want to do Avatar Flight of Passage, but I did notice that that's not even available, so no point in buying the Genie Plus if I can't ride that ride when all the other attractions have like a 20-minute wait. Before we make our way into the park, I wanted to stop at the Island Mercantile because they just released a whole entire line of awesome like vault collectible merchandise and uh, sometimes when you come to Animal Kingdom, it's more in stock here because people wouldn't think to come here and they do. They have some great items. Oh, I am so excited right now. Take a look at this. Lots of 25th anniversary merchandise and I am obsessed with it. Look at the Kate Castle hoodie right here. This is beautiful and look at the back side of it. It's time to remember the magic. This is amazing. I love this so much. I definitely think I should get it. They also have a 25th anniversary like bomber jacket. Look at this. This stuff is so cool. Look at Simba on there. I love it. And then the hat. I think I'm gonna get this hoodie. This hoodie is $69.99. I think it's coming home with me. I ended up buying the Kate Castle hoodie. I had to, I was in love with it and I'm sure it's gonna sell out pretty fast. And because we're gonna be going into the park, I don't wanna carry it around with me. So I'm actually leaving it here and I can pick it up when I leave. They give you a little yellow slip and you return and you can uh, pick it up before you leave so you don't have to carry it around the park. Like I mentioned before, it's not that busy in the park today. Expedition Everest has a 20 minute wait. Navi River Journey has a 20 minute wait. And I think we're gonna head down there first to ride that. And then uh, Flight of Passage is 95 minutes. It's tough to be above 10 minutes. This is like a really nice day. Dinosaurs a 10 minute wait. We're gonna have some fun today, I'm excited. Navi River Journey being a 20 minute wait is insanely exceptional. So we're gonna head over there, ride that first, then probably a little Everest and just kind of enjoy the park and see if there's any new snacks. New snacks, I know we're going to dinner later, but I wouldn't mind trying a little lunch, you know? Seriously, with wait times like that, it's absolutely pointless to buy the Genie Plus, I feel like, especially at Animal Kingdom. And now we have made it to the Valley of Mora. You can hear all the different animals. I love coming in here. I really wish we can ride Flight of Passage. I mean, that's a fun ride, but I don't think I'm gonna wait 95 minutes. If they had a lightning lane that I could purchase, I would probably buy it right away, but they're just not available. But Navi River's still a fun ride, and I wouldn't wait more than 30 minutes for that ride. So 20 minutes is perfect. It's also gonna be interesting to see if that's a true wait time. 20 minutes and it's 1.48. So we're gonna head on in. The reason I say I wouldn't wait longer than 30 minutes, I feel like this ride is a fun ride, but it's very short and I can come all the time. I mean, obviously if you're on vacation, you're gonna wanna wait as long as possible because when are you gonna come back on vacation? But uh, the only thing I really love about this ride is the animatronic at the end. I do have to give it credit for having an amazingly themed queue. Look at this. 
I love all of Pandora. I think it's just really breathtaking and it's fun to just explore all the different like designs and reasons why they do certain things. It's beautiful in here. That was incredible. It was only a 12 minute wait. It said 20 and it ended up being 12. Our lucky mode of transportation right here. Look at that. It was a fun little boat ride and I just love the music and the animatronic at the end. Like the shaman, she is so like majestic looking. The way she just swirls around her arms, it's hard to believe that that's like not real. Like it looks so lifelike and uh, it's definitely probably my favorite animatronic out of uh, uh, everywhere. Now that we got to ride Navi River Journey, I kind of want to make my way over near Expedition Everest. As you guys know, it's probably one of my favorite rides here in the park. And it's got a super low wait time and even lower because we can do the single rider line. As I start making my way over to Expedition Everest, I do want to stop at some of the little eateries or the food stands because they always have rotating specials. Flame Tree Barbecue always has a new cupcake that they have. The Smiling Crocodile has new tacos. And yes, there is a little food stand called the Smiling Crocodile and I think it's so awesome. Right here is the Smiling Crocodile. Look, it's got a Smiling Crocodile on top. It always reminds me of Bobby Boucher. And they always have like little tacos here. Pulled pork street tacos, street corn tacos, chicken street tacos, and then also an island sunrise. But this usually closes at like 3 p.m. So you have to be early to actually come here. I hope some of you got the Bobby Boucher and the Smiling Crocodile. Well, technically an alligator in the movie reference because I think that is so funny. And then over at the Flame Tree Barbecue, they actually have a Sunrise Cupcake. And I had to get it. I had to see if it was any good. Normally, I try all the cupcakes here. They might have had this on the menu before, but it is pretty. It's a chocolate cupcake, but with vanilla buttercream on the inside. And it has like a sunrise uh, kind of look to it. It's got sunrise sprinkles. Look at it. You can see... Uh, Timon and Pumbaa and Simba actually walking across the sunrise. This is a very pretty cupcake. And of course I had to come to my favorite little dining area uh, to try the cupcake. And it's funny because whenever you come and eat by the Flame Tree Barbecue, tons of birds will try to eat your food. That guy's sneaking up on me. I honestly feel like he's gonna come and try to grab this cupcake. Look at him. Do you like cupcakes? Now we don't feed the wildlife. Oh, he said no. He said, no, thank you. And then we're gonna cut down the center here and we'll see the little vanilla cream on the inside. I did not do that gracefully. Oh boy. Oh, look at that. It kind of just tumbled. It, it fell apart big time. That's the cupcake. All right, let's grab a little bit of the icing, a little bit of the filling, all in one bite. Yeah, not the best cupcake. I'm attracting more birds here. Oh, here they come. You got the big daddy over there. Big daddy over there. Sorry, you can't have chocolate. It's not allowed. Gracie can't have chocolate. You can't have chocolate. Honestly, I just always feel like the icing to cupcake ratio is over proportionized. Like there's way too much icing on top of this cupcake. I need a little thin layer of icing and then a nice little cakey moist cake. 
Enough for the cupcake business though. Let's cut through Dino Land as we make our way over to Expedition Everest. I mean, if Dinosaur has a short wait time, I wouldn't mind riding that. It's one of my favorite rides. But also, I just want to check out the whole Dino Land USA area. Obviously, something big's coming over here, but we just don't know yet what it is. As you guys are aware, they demolished the primeval world and there's speculation of a new land coming in the Animal Kingdom. Some people say Zootopia, some say Encanto or Coco. I mean, I, I, I like Dino Land. I feel like it can stay. I think they can get rid of the uh, Chester and Hester area and keep Dinosaur the ride and still have a new land. And that's what I hope that they do. Like if they just keep this area right here as the entrance to go into Dino Land and then you make a right to go to Dinosaur, they have all of this to play with over here to actually have a new themed area. Honestly, I am all for a new themed land here. And as much as I love Dino Land USA, I can care less if Dino Rama actually disappears. I'll be honest, I, I mean, I think it's a fun little area, but right now it's just empty. This is the area that I'm talking about. Primeval World used to be on the other side of that big blue fence, but they just demolished it all. And now it just looks like an empty parking lot. It literally looks like we these are parking lot spots right here. Look at this. It's like, yeah, we are in a parking lot. I think it's always been that way though. It's a part of the theming of the area over here. I'll be honest, I think that's really cool that they have the parking spots actually inside the Dino Rama area. It kind of fits as like, you know, uh, a hometown like uh, carnival or fair where it's usually in a parking lot. And since we're over here, I think maybe we will uh, play a game or two. You have to buy a little uh, game ticket. They're $6 a piece. And then you can go play a game to win a prize try or possibly win a prize. Oh, let's do a fossil fun, the water gun game. I'm doing it. Um, we are currently at uh, three players. We are playing for Little Mickey, Little Minnie, or Baby Triceratops. If oh. we have one more, it us up to the large figure mini. And then we have to have eight or more of those. Oh, that's what I was looking for. I wanted the Iguanodon. Well, if you would like, um, that one is a single player game, Comet Crashers. And all prize options are available there. However, it is a game of chance. I'm going to do it. I'm going for the Iguanodon. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, scratch the water gun game. You need eight players to try to get the Iguanodon. And that's what I want from the, the ride, the, the dinosaur. So instead, they do have the Iguanodon over at the ball game. We have to throw the ball in the colored circle. So I think we're going to try that one. All right. We're going to try for the Iguanodon. We need a yellow or a white to get the Iguanodon. That did not. I thought it was going to bounce a little bit. I, I really thought it was going to bounce around a little bit. <laughs> oh, nope. No luck here. Oh, no. Yeah, they're not bouncing much. Oh, access denied. Man. Okay, that was just the first try. $6. I decided to get another ticket, and I'm going to try to bank it now. I'm going to try to bank it because my first one, I just kind of like threw it right into a hole. It didn't even bounce. I came back for more. I, I feel good about this time. I have a new strategy. A new strategy? Yep. I'm going to try to bank it. All right, here we go. We're going to try to bank it off the wall. That did not work. <laughs> <laughs> That did not work at all. Oh, I thought it was flying down there. Hold on. Yeah, we got to formulate a new plan. It's not working. All right, either get one extra. Oh, come on, get in there. Oh, it almost went to the blue one. I get one extra. Here we go. Here we go. Nope. I tried. Access denied. I failed the mission and I did not get the dinosaur. I lost $12 and I think I'm walking away. I'm walking away. Technically, if I really wanted to get that dino, I can go back and buy eight tickets for $6 a piece and then kind of buy out the water gun game and then just have mine as actually the only one that wins. That way I can assure a victory. But now we have made it over to Expedition Everest and we're gonna ride the single rider line see how long it takes Hey friend and uh, Enjoy a nice little ride. Let's go get that Yeti
Look at that single rider. It said a 20 minute wait, but uh, I might as well just ride it as soon as possible. Honestly, I think I'm the only one that's gonna be waiting. Yeah, look at that, fancy. That was a solid one minute wait. Here comes our train. Oh, here we go. I would like to walk up them steps one day. Gets me every time. Guess who made it back with us? Not that dino. Expedition Everest always just puts me in a happy mood. And look at that, it's still a 20 minute wait after we got off. And honestly, I feel like that 20 minute wait was probably like a 10 minute wait. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna keep moving along. It's been a great day so far. I'm really having the best time ever at Animal Kingdom. I thought about going to ride Cali River Rapids, but I don't think I want to be a soggy bottom boy when I end up going to Jico. You know what I mean? It's kind of a, a high class restaurant there and uh, wet shorts probably doesn't fit, uh, fit the dress attire or the, the dress code. Since Cali River Rapids isn't in our agenda today, uh, I wanted to come over and at least check out Kilimanjaro Safaris. See how long the line is. We might be able to ride that if we have time. And uh, then kind of complete our full lap around Animal Kingdom. Kilimanjaro Safari says 30 minutes, but I have a sneaky suspicion it's not a 30 minute wait. Honestly, if all of these rides have a 20 minute wait, I feel like Kilimanjaro Safaris is going to be like less than 30 minutes. I mean, it has to be. Honestly, I could say probably 15 minutes. 15 minutes tops. It's also important to point out the safari uh, closes at 5 o'clock. The last safari goes out at 5 p.m. Because all the animals got to go to sleep. They got to go to bed at 5 o'clock. They're like me. Oh, here comes our uh, safari vehicle, Simba One. Alright guys, on the right side of the truck, watch your hands, arms, legs, feet, the doors are going to be sliding and closed. Hey right, guys, look above you up there, there is a game spotting guide to help you identify the animals we might find out of the reserve. Hopefully we'll get a chance to see if you know. Asante Sana. Alright guys, let's say in Harambe, Twinbe, which means... Let's go. Let's go. Well, Jabo, everybody, how's everybody doing today? Wonderful! Wow, that was delayed, but we'll go with that. Hey everybody, welcome to Kilimanjaro Safaris. My name is Travis, and I'm going to be your game driver for your safari through the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Now, a few rules before we get started here. Rule number one, I know these are Maasai giraffe because they have an irregular shape pattern on their coat, as opposed to like a reticulated Rothschild or even Nubian giraffes, which have a blocky, square, or rectangular pattern on their coat. I mean, people knew there were different types of giraffe. I didn't know there was different types of giraffe. There you go. 
Mars. Now look up the hillside there behind. Oh yeah, got a couple up there. Don't ever let a giraffe lick you. Ugh. Nasty. This can stick your food in their mouth. But just never cause it helps me. I'll give you an example. See the bushes on your left here? These are acacia. Giraffe love acacia. But look at the branches closely. They're covered in thorns. But a giraffe will actually wrap its tongue around one of those thorny branches. Now, this because wood in his mouth will help protect its tongue from getting great. Wow, look at those. Then the large animals you see back there, those are Patterson Zealand. Patterson Zealand are the largest animals. I miss when the bridge used to make noises, like a squeaky noise. I know, I miss that too. Yeah, it used to be like I'm a squeaky noise. I'm not glad that the text, I enjoyed that. <laughs> wow. Elephants communicate using a low rumble that's actually below the ability of humans to hear it called infrasound. But an elephant can hear it up to 10 miles away through its feet. I actually feel the vibration of the rumble in the ground. I mean, they just don't get And then let me introduce you to the most frightening animal on the reserve. Ostrich. They don't like me. They want to steal my name tag one time. <laughs> now, ostrich can run 45 miles an hour, and although they do have wings, exactly what they're doing around there, you know, just kind of hang out, lay around, and sleep 20 plus hours a day. On your right, white rhinos. White rhinos get their name from the Afrikaans word fight, meaning I think it charges speeds up to 35 miles an hour. They have really bad eyesight, too. Don't ever sneak up on one. Always let them know you're coming. Bang a drum. It's weird. There's a Bontabok in front of us up here. Bontabok for extinct in the wild. Bontabok? Yeah. There's a Bontabok. You see him in there? See him? <gasps> Uh, unfortunately, about 150 years ago, there were only like 20 box bucks left on the planet. That was a great safari. Travis was amazing. He was one of the best uh, safari guides I think I've ever had. His voice just fit perfectly in the role too. And I got to see lots of cool animals. It's probably the most I've seen of the lions. And it was also really exciting to see the Bontabak. It was kind of funny because you guys caught me in action of getting excited to see the Bontabak. Well, that was great success. And now I think it's time we start making our way to dinner. We had a fun day today. I, I had so much fun. Low wait times everywhere we went. It was just a chill day. And now it's time for a very nice dinner. Oh. I just walked all the way out of the park and realized I forgot to grab my cake hoodie, my 25th anniversary cake hoodie. So now we gotta walk all the way back. I'm so glad I got it when I did because when we came back, they were all gone. Look at that. They are absolutely all gone. Wow. There we go. We have secured the package. I love this hoodie. I'm so excited. I think that is such a cool added benefit to be able to pick up your packages so you don't carry them around, but I almost left the park without it. I did put my name and phone number, so I'm sure they would have called me if I did forget it. Here we go. We have made it over to Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. And if you guys ever want to come visit the lodge from the park, you can just take a bus. They have bus uh, pickup locations right outside the park, and it's literally only two minutes. I have to say, this is probably one of my all-time favorite Disney resorts. Look at this. Animal Kingdom Lodge is just so beautiful. We're gonna head down to the restaurant and scope out the situation a little bit. I wanted to try to see, uh, look at the menu, and then go over some more details and facts about it. I'm sure lots of people just walk past Jico because Boma's right here and everyone knows Boma because of its, you know, famous buffet, but uh, Jico is literally right, right over here. This restaurant is classified as a hard to get reservation. It's only open 5 to 9.30, five days a week. I think it's closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And like I said, it's right next to Boma. So like, I mean, I love Boma. I love the stews in there. Uh, it's a buffet serving. This is a little bit different to uh, table service and a little bit upscale, you know? Here is a look at the menu. 
and it's got some pretty interesting entrees it's got the oak grilled filet i heard that the mac and cheese was really amazing with this that's around 54 dollars uh they've got a nice short rib dish they've got some cool stews a sustainable fish a lamb shake it looks like the most expensive thing on this uh menu was 54 dollars and then they've got the jico salad some seared scallops oh there's the boar tenderloin i was talking about this the other day i don't know if i'm gonna get that though and then a sweet potato grunded soup that actually sounds good all of this looks so amazing so i'm i'm here for it i am all here for it it is time to actually head on in it's our reservation time and i'm excited i'll show you a little bit of the restaurant also if you didn't know jico actually means the cooking place and they have the uh, largest uh, collection of african wines outside africa and i'm kind of interested in getting that but they do have a old-fashioned here that i kind of like looked at and i was like i gotta get this it comes with a madagascar uh bourbon like a vanilla bourbon so I'm all about the old fashions. Here is the restaurant itself, and it also has the largest hidden Mickey indoors. And I'm kind of excited. They said it's over here by the stove, or well, by the ovens. Oh, I see you already. Look at that. Hi, friends. How are you? I'm looking for the hidden Mickey, and I think I caught it now. <laughs> you don't notice it until you uh, see it. Look at that. That is a huge hidden Mickey. Yeah, what are you guys cooking for back here? Huh? Yeah, how are you? Oh, very fancy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, are you guys making some of the appetizers here? Uh, right now we're doing uh, the Chico salad. Oh. And then over here we're doing duck taco. Wow. <laughs> Tonight I'm actually going to be dining with my friends Tim and Marianne and we're going to be chit-chatting a little bit. So I'm not going to go too in-depth with all of the dining review, but I'm going to show you guys what I liked and talk about it a little bit and have fun. That's the most important thing. A uh, hot towel with rose water. Mm. Very fancy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's rose water that they put in this? Oh, greet it with a hot towel with rose water. Yes. I, it is. Oh, yeah. we give them back? Right at the beginning, of, if you're finished. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I decided on going with the filet because it has a bone marrow crust on it and I was told instead of getting the mac and cheese I can get lemon mashed potatoes and I've never had lemon mashed potatoes so I'm kind of excited to try those and I maybe have high expectations for this filet it also comes with a chocolate red wine uh, glaze on it so uh, this might be a winner a winning a winning filet Cheers. Cheers Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the old fashioned is phenomenal. I love it. It's like the perfect thing for me. And uh, now we're going to dive into some apps. Uh, we ended up getting the wild boar tenderloin, which looks really good. And then I think we got some scallops too. Here is the wild boar tenderloin. This looks actually way better than the wild boar sausage I tried at Festival of the Arts. And it's got a polenta on the bottom there. It looks really good. And then we got a bread service. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Very fancy looking bread service. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Trying the wild oh, boar. Yes, I will uh, try some of that. That's so good. Wow. I don't know what that is on this boar, but it is so good. I really do love it a lot. Totally tastes different than the boar that I had at the Festival of the Arts. Like I said, that was more like a ground-up sausage. This is more like a filet, and it is divine. That's a fancy word, divine. <laughs> a little giraffe bread, and I like the texture already on it. That might be my new favorite bread. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to be honest, I never had a palate cleanser before. So the, the fancy word is intermezzo. Intermezzo? Yes. Intermezzo. Yeah, appetizer, <laughs> Mango Enjoy. sorbet. I'll be right back with the drinks. Thank it, you. With a tiny spoon. King of the castle, I have a chair, I have a chair. <laughs> oh, it is very mango. Yes. Isn't it good? It feels like dessert. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like this. I'm cleansing my palate. Yeah. 
enough of the cleansing the palate business the food has arrived here is the steak and then we've got is this the fish it's grouper oh grouper very fancy and then you got the short rib short rib i love that dish look at that and it's a bone-in short rib too oh yeah i feel like i should have got the short rib yeah <laughs> yeah it looks good but I, i'm excited for this this actually looks amazing little out of blurry oh wait there we go now we'll focus in yeah this looks amazing look at that very excited and that's the lemon mashed potatoes uh yes <laughs> speaking of lemon potatoes we're gonna dive in and they said that there was no dairy made with these no dairy that's kind of crazy olive oil they said and i guess lemon some lemon not often do you get to try lemon mashed potatoes very lemony very good those are honestly i'm, I'm obsessed with these lemon potatoes <laughs> we're gonna cut into this steak here look at that nice char bone marrow crust in there look at that chocolate red wine demi glaze this is actually i'm impressed can this be a high ranking fillet for me i mean it might be here we go first bite normally i'm not a fillet fan but i gotta say i can't beat that crust the bone marrow it's just cooked perfectly and it's also cooked on an open fire too uh i noticed all of their uh like uh flatbreads are cooked on an open fire and then the grill is an open fire too so the char is amazing and the demi glaze here much too good i think this might rank actually high for me that steak is phenomenal i have to say i absolutely love the bone marrow crust on there i would rank the filet maybe in my top 10 like i know that's that's shocking but yeah i mean it was exceptional and then the wild boar was good the whole experience was absolutely amazing now it's time for dessert for dessert they for dessert for dessert they have a lot of cool kind of unique items they have african drum beats they've got candied beets i'm sure dwight Schrute would love that honestly i might want to get the beets but i'm too uh drawn to this uh malva pudding they said it tastes like cinnamon toast crunch and it looks really cool uh when i seen it at another table there so i think i might go with that it's their signature item too oh wow look at that it's like a little bird's nest it looks like a little egg got a little bit of everything on one bite here and i'm excited it definitely tastes like cinnamon toast crunch cereal it's so good though and i like the little bread puddings a pineapple they just keep on giving us different types of fruit yes you had some mango look at this are there pineapple sugar candies? Complimentary. Put them in your purse. <laughs> Put them in your purse. <laughs> and with that, I think we are done here today. Jiko was amazing. I absolutely loved it. The service was exceptional. All of the little things that they add in there I thought were great. Like the uh, palate cleansing and the little uh, pineapple fruit tart at the end. And my steak was phenomenal. The boar was good. The dessert was out of this world. The dessert was so good. I was obsessed with it. And even the bread service, the whole meal was exceptional. And it wasn't like that high tier price either like it was like 50 dollars range but it wasn't like the 90 dollars a person or you know monster paul's like 189 dollars a person but i really enjoyed that it was great to hang out with tim and marianne and her family and uh, they actually gave me this buffalo bills hat they're from buffalo even though i'm a niners fan i'm gonna root for buffalo uh they're my afc uh companions there uh i'm not the biggest pittsburgh fan i know i'm from pennsylvania or, or stuff like that i'm always a niners fan through to uh my uh upbringing there and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video i enjoyed making it we'll see you next time bye just casually sitting here watching fireworks on my way home look at that
Love it. Ooh. Oh, wow. Red light. Green light, go. I always like ringing my doorbell and Gracie freaks out. Oh. <laughs> Let's hide over here, she won't see me. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs>